Alrighty, everyone. Welcome back to Automotive Anatomy. Uh, today I'm with Mr. Brandon. Mr. Brandon, thank, thank you, you so much. I appreciate your time. No problem. Uh, so tell us, man, what do you drive? Uh, it's a 90 Civic SI. Uh, it's a LSV Tech, LSV. basically. Okay. Uh, get more into detail about that. And it's all-wheel drive. All-wheel drive. Yeah. Interesting. Ah! Alrighty, so inside we have a... Uh, it's the Nardi Blue Stitch, uh, got from JHP USA. Uh, really nice wheel, I love that steering wheel. Our G Hub, uh, glow shift gauges, it's got the race pack, uh, Helltech, made by Helltech, uh, complimentaries of Rye Wire. Uh, thanks, Ryan. And uh, it's got billet, billet automotive bu uh, push start buttons as well with the rolling anti lag down there, CRV shifter. Um, it's got a short throw kit on there right now. We got all our USB ports for our tuning, for our race pack dash, and for our AM Infinity, and our data login. Uh, DC2 center console for the armrest, that's a real big thing of mine. Because they come with no, uh, no armrest yes. to begin with, right, okay. And it kind of fills that center up versus looking more race car-ish. Yeah. Okay. Trying to make it feel at home, you know? <laughs> Want to feel comfy in there. Yeah. What kind of bucket? Uh, it is a no-name, uh, non-stitch. I got it from SEMA this year. Oh, okay. Um, but I do love the seat and no complaints, so I'm going to rock with it until something happens. Cool. And then you have the OEM seats in the back? OEM seats. That's our headrest in the back. These are all original seats. It is new carpet. Uh, Super just clean. Yeah. You don't you leave old carpet in your house, so I wouldn't leave old carpet in my car. There you go. <laughs> um, you know, with this kind of power... You ever thought about caging it? It's gonna get caged. Okay. Uh, that's another thing we're, we were just talking about. But right now I'm really enjoying just the street feel of the car. And you know, once I feel like I cage it, then I feel that it's gonna take away the street feel. And she's, yeah, gonna, definitely. she's gonna have to do more track time just to fulfill her, her cage price. Are you gonna cage it and strip it? No, it's gonna be full interior. Nice. Yeah, yeah. No, oh. I'm not stripping anything until the cops tell me I have to. <laughs> until then, that's not happening. Oh, there you go. I love that, man. Yeah. I love that. Cool. All right, man. So, what do you got going on in the engine compartment? All right, the engine compartment is a uh, B18. B18. It's, yeah, it's a GSR. Okay, it is uh, Reesley by Golden Eagle, 84 mil uh, bore on there, and then it's got a. LS rods, LS crank, which the crank is Golden Eagle. The LS rods are um, they're Eagle rods, uh, but they are LS spec. And uh, it's got Tron pistons, 10 5 to ones. Uh, going up, it has a uh, full super tech valve train steel setup. It is not a titanium setup. It is a street steel setup. Mm -hmm. um, it has keepers, retainers, dual springs, and believe it or not, but it's on stock valves and stock ITR cams. <laughs> Just waiting for it, huh? <laughs> mm, yes, I mean, to me, it's all in the tune. I've seen stock heads go up to 850 all day. Mm -hmm. So I'm not stock heads, but stock valves at least. Right. You know, so I do have steel valves, but I noticed a little nicking in them from the rebuild of the last setup. So I chose, I, we compared the two. Mm -hmm. We had a, a OEM valve, and then we had a Supertech steel valve. And the steel valve had a little indentations on the top, I'm assuming from the keepers, which we don't know if it was too tight or the valve latch was too tight or whatnot, but most of the time it's specced in, so it's pretty perfect. Right. But I did notice some wear on there. And then you have this Honda valve that's 30 years old that is completely immaculate, that has mm. no pits, no nothing. So just a, a split decision. I said, fuck it, we're gonna send these and, and I feel safer, I feel more confident that way. And it's been working out. And it's been working out. Okay. So mm -hmm. I noticed with the uh, with the steel valves, we were messing up uh, valve seats. I mean, we we're just constantly tearing her apart. So. Okay, so she's been somewhat reliable. I yes, that. exactly. Okay. You have drove her to Texas, drove her to Vegas, wow. drove her to LA, drove her to San Diego. She drives, man. That's what she's she's ready to go. Sweet. All right, and uh, turbo setup. What do you have going? Turbo on? setup is a 30R. Um, she BAC manifold and then uh, it does have AC. I do have to redo the, the AC lines from the last setup, mm -hmm. but everything is still full function. Uh, the turbo, it's a uh, billet wheel, and then it's got the V-band in and out, um, tile, housing. Uh, downpipe made by my buddy High Ref Theo, mm -hmm. which the bottom end was also assembled by High Ref Theo. 
which a lot of my fabrication is also done by high ref Theo and it is also tuned by high ref Theo. Wow. Um, it's got CRV trans, H22 Euro R, first, second, and fifth. It's got one, two shift fork and fourth, third, fourth shift fork reinforced. And then it's got a uh, M factory LSD, thousand horsepower insane sh shafts, pretty much standard, standard stuff. It's on a uh, ID, the new ID 1700 X injectors. Um, fed by a Graham's fuel pump, Graham's fuel filter, and sitting on a Skunk 2 composite fuel rail with the aeromotive pressure regulator. Um, Skunk 2 throttle body 70 mil, does have a full water to air system. Uh, it's got a, a Bosch water pump. It's got two water pumps. It's got a Bosch and then it's got a um, FPP water pump on there mm -hmm. to uh, help with the backflow. So tile, Tile uh, wastegate, turbonetics blow off valve. Uh, it's got the T1. It's got a full um, distributor delete. So we're using the T1 Hall effect sensor that is uh, made by T1 Development to pair it. We matched it with the Golden Eagle um, intake side cam gear, 1320 belt tensioner. And this is my baby. This is my breather box that is a uh, designed by built apex strictly for me a uh, full cnc piece on top and then the rest is just welded together super cool piece super cool Very piece man that, so. super cool piece mm -hmm. got to utilize every space we have as we're trying to keep everything here up front mm -hmm. so the batteries down here somewhere. batteries like, down there yep but otherwise um, I wouldn't it's got a space. speed factory full tucked radiator dash 16 uh lines going up to the speed factory fuel pot with the moroso cap wow. it's got a moroso overflow radiator coolant tank and then that's my fuel tank for my water to air setup it's got a hush performance full hydro conversion uh, with the cnc reservoir tank uh, and it's on a twin disc comp clutch buddy theo he's been i've been so blessed for him to to you know, share his knowledge with me. Any questions I have, he's always right then and there. As far as, you know, boost by gear and stuff like that, I've all set up myself. Rolling anti-lag, that's all been set up myself, but it has been on the dyno. Horsepower numbers, I'm really, uh, I mean, horsepower does horsepower, smorsmower. Doesn't really mean nothing to me. Uh, it's just, she makes some good power. Okay, some good power, some good torque. Good torque, that's for sure. Um, upper in the high fours of torque and that's that's like <laughs> it's hard for especially on a 30r turbo man that's 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 for horsepower yeah. alone <laughs> yeah okay um so let, let's get into the all-wheel drive okay what is it that you're actually using um and your thought behind the pieces or the ride that you ended up going with okay so the all-wheel drive hype is pretty much he say she say Okay, mm -hmm. and like I said, I'm I'm old school, and I've been around Jeeps with lockers and and rock crawlers and stuff like that. So I know systems can handle it if it's built to handle that. Yes, if you're putting a 30 year old system in a car and you're putting six, seven, eight hundred, nine hundred thousand horsepower to the car, of course the drivetrain is not going to handle that. We all know that. That's not nothing new to us. But what is new to us is people are scared to develop and make their own things. And with technology, you can design and make anything you want. So this car is a true four wheel drive lock car. It is not. There is no viscous coupler. There is no clutch packs. There is no nothing of that nature. It goes straight transfer case to a solid drive line to a solid differential. To solid axles. Wow. There's no no weak points of engagement, um, and the reason I went with that number one is because everyone said that you can't do it. <laughs> okay. So that was number one. Number two, I just couldn't see myself relying on a 30 year old clutch design to to to, to bring my power to the back wheels to deliver it to the back, and. To me, it's just common sense, man. Yes, we're gonna have we have issues, full U turns. We have binding issues, but it's just like my my pop's old Camaro that just welded diff. It just chopped in the back. It's nothing serious, you know what I mean. The rest is just has to get built to handle it. So, what did you end up utilizing since you went with that setup? And what was the challenging, the most challenging part that you experienced throughout the process? The most challenging part was wasting money. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, that's that's a problem. We started off transmission 
then we started with the drive line. Well, the CRV drive lines, you can't cut and, and re weld them to size because they're throwaways. Mm -hmm. they're, they, they use a friction weld on each side of them. So if you do cut it and weld it yourself, it's never going to be true balance or of that nature. So I bought that. That was a waste of money because every time you go to the junkyard, they lift them up with the forklift and they're damaged pretty much. So started there, I got my drive line made by uh, Drive Line Pros in, uh, in Gardena. Uh, it's good for a thousand horsepower. It's a solid system with a slip yoke in the middle with the carrier bearing. And then it goes to a stainless steel adapter that I got from my buddy, uh, Tony, and uh, goes bolts directly to the wagon uh, diff that is paired with the, uh, with the Quaife LSD from a D-series transmission modified to go into the diff in the rear. Also, uh, if you don't mind sharing a little bit of the project that you have with your son. 